Hey everyone, welcome back to Aegis Moto Adventures. Today we're going to make a custom part for Sumo, a KTM 790 Adventure R. Um, while we were working, running the TAT, I noticed that the uh, side stand leaned the bike over way too far, especially when it was loaded, and I was having some problems with it. I almost dumped it a couple times because uh, the weight on the bike uh, would tip it over in the mountains on uneven terrain. So we're going to make a uh, side stand extension and pad that will keep the bike a little bit more upright and also provide uh, more stability with a wider pad at the bottom. The problem with a KTM 790 Adventure R leaning over too far has been recognized. Uh, we met uh, somebody when we were running the uh, TAT, they were doing the New England BDR and he had a uh, 790R also and he already had an extension on his uh, side stand and uh, he bought it commercially but apparently this is a recognized problem that the bike just leans over too much especially when loaded. We're going to take this piece of uh, three quarter inch diameter aluminum slab, it's two inches thick and we're going to machine this uh, so that we can make a uh, pad out of it and an extension that will keep the bike more upright. I've already uh, done dimensions, so it's just a matter of uh, starting to get it in the Bridgeport and start making it. We uh, just used this cutter here and we faced off both sides of the uh, cylinder just to uh, square it up so that we're working with a flat surface. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the center uh, between the jaws here, the center line of this piece so that we can start to work on putting in uh, uh, screw uh, mounts uh, for the uh, pad uh, top that locks it on. What we've done here is this steel piece which will lock the uh, extension on the uh, bike to the uh, initial uh, foot portion of the side stand and what we did with the center line is we were able to go um, this direction and then the opposite direction the same amount of distance to locate all these screw holes and now because this piece is just a little bit smaller than the original that was being used we're having to drill two new holes here to provide uh, the additional uh, screw holes that it needs okay now we have the uh, part that we want to replicate and you can see that the side stand foot fit in this recess right here in this old piece that we're going to sacrifice to use that as a pattern to transfer that into the new spacer. And uh, we'll work on that tomorrow, so we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, we finished machining on the uh, spacer for the side stand. We have this uh, portion uh, machined out here for the uh, foot of the side stand. And then we went ahead and tapered this so that it'll match the angle that the bike will be on when the uh, side stand is down. What we were doing on the lathe was counter boring uh, the spacer just to lighten it up so we drilled a hole all the way through it and then uh, bored it and this lightened it up by uh, at least half I would say. And then to give it uh, some scuff resistance we went ahead and made a thin stainless steel plate to go on the bottom of it. Uh, that way it will have more resistance to scuffing when you're putting the uh, side stand up and down. Well when I went to fit the uh, side stand spacer on it there was a little bit of a weld globule on the back side here so i took the side stand off and ground that off and now i've respray painted it uh, gloss black to match the original color and uh, once that's dry then i can continue to work on that spacer this is the uh, spacer and i've now uh, spray painted it black but i also at the top part uh, right up here where that groove is at I had to uh, drill that out and counter bore it so that I could put the uh, retaining uh, screw 
uh, for the mount on top uh, in backwards because of the angle of the uh, side stand. Uh, but uh, it's starting to look pretty good now and everything gets dried here. I'll be able to uh, fit it onto the bike and see how it works. Well, here is the uh, spacer uh, bolted on to the bottom of the kickstand. And as you can see, I've spray painted it all black and looks uh, real nice and uh, should do a great job for me. The only problem is, is this piece was made out of aluminum and aluminum uh, would just chew up along this bottom edge. Uh, every time it was on concrete or pavement, gravel, it would just chew it up. So what I'm going to do here is I've got a little uh, thin sheet of stainless steel here. Um, I, got, I have to notch the stainless steel yet to accommodate uh, this uh, screw access point here. So I'll get that drilled and notched out, and then I will attach that to the bottom of this using my uh, handy-dandy 3M uh, double stick tape. Okay, I've got the uh, notch in, and on the back side, I've got my uh, double stick tape. All I need to do is peel it off and put it on. Well, there's good news and bad news with my little uh, spacer for the side stand. The good news is holds the bike just about right where I want it. Um, it's just off of uh, level uh, to the one side, so it'll hold more weight. The bad news is my little sticky idea for the stainless steel plate uh, didn't work it came off uh, right away so that aluminum piece will just have to wear a little bit and over time um, if it gets to the point where I have to replace it then so be it but I'm guessing that uh, that'll last for the life of the bike I wanted to provide you information on why I completed this uh, update to the KTM 790 Adventure R and why I don't consider it a design flaw to the bike uh, Adventure bikes, by their very nature, have a high center of gravity to increase ground clearance and suspension travel. So when KTM uh, puts a kickstand, side stand on the bike, they do so with just the basic bike because they have no idea of how the end user is going to load the bike. The problem comes in when the bike gets loaded by the end user. And I'll try to give you an explanation of what happens. On a flat level surface, the problems encountered uh, with the bike leaning over too far uh, really aren't that apparent. But once you get into the mountains, you're always having to put the bike with the kickstand on the side of the hill in a situation that the bike always leans toward the kickstand. In other words, if you would do it so that the slope leans again, away from the kickstand, the bike would tip over the opposite direction uh, because the bike is just too upright. And so keeping in mind that the front wheel, rear wheel, where they contact the ground along with the side stand, creates that triangle. So you're always having to put the bike with the kickstand on the side of the hill that allows it to lean to uh, put the weight on the kickstand. The problem comes in is when your weight is outside of where the kickstand is. In other words, your weight gets out here beyond where the kickstand is, and then the kickstand will no longer hold the weight of the bike and it'll tip over. So basically, anytime you have the center of gravity or excess weight outside that triangle created by the wheels and the side stand, the bike will tip over. By putting the spacer on right here, it makes the bike sit more upright and therefore the center of weight or center of gravity stays inside that triangle and allows you to keep the bike uh, a little bit more secure in hilly situations where the hill creates a disadvantage to you being able to put the bike on the side stand. So therefore with an adventure bike it's really important to keep all your gear really light if at all possible and to keep it as low on the bike as you possibly can. Well, I hope you liked this video and the explanation I gave. If you did, please give it the big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Take care.